you're live. What's up, everyone? Hello. Welcome, Welcome to Worship Tutorials Live. Good morning, Franz. Today's uh, Franz title of the stream. Uh, by the way, hanging out with Fuller Bradford, and uh, my I name say is. Say you could tell them my name. My name is Brian. Morning. Everyone. I'm afraid of internet. We are Piracy. all worship leaders, and uh, <sighs> we're talking like nobody knows who we are. That's right. And uh, I'm not anymore. I quit my job. But. Uh, well, I quit my job. Now I'm still I just, a worship leader, Brian. Now I work on the internet. Brian, so. can you scoot back a couple inches? I feel a little weird. Thank you. Sorry. No. So to, that's to, okay. the, the uh, title it's, it's of this me. live video is "People Imitate." So you messed up Easter. What oh. you celebrate? People, we didn't go with that one. People imitate Brad, what cuddle. you celebrate. What? People what imitate what you celebrate. What does I, that mean? I, I started out saying. Guess. I started out titling it. People, you replicate what you celebrate, which that is a too. similar idea. Yeah. But uh, is that people, a Craig Groeschelism? I think I believe it, is. it is. Yeah. Yeah. People if imitate, it rhymes, it probably is Craig Groeschel. People yes. imitate what you celebrate. Yes, they do. Um, so we're gonna talk about that first. Let's say this: How was your Easter? How yeah. were the Easter's? The Easter's. You I guys love, chime in. Comment how your Easter's were. I love to quote. Share uh, some stories. Nacho Libre. No, don't, don't quote Because the guy was like... <laughs> I've been six since the Easter. When he's Easters. talking about the beans. Yes. Do you not realize? So you messed up Easter. With since Dira. Easter's. Uh -huh. And uh, mm -hmm. in our on our big Excuse planning me. board, I noticed you guys wrote Easter as Easter's. Was that a nod to Nacho Libre? Yep. Probably. I hope so. Yep. I'm proud of you guys. Yeah. So we want to celebrate um, what God did through your ministries. Yep. And through your worship ministries or, or challenges you may have had. Epic fails are you get to share too. Those are fun. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I would like to see who had the largest Easter fail. Oh, let's this hear it. You, so comment uh, in the chat room what your largest Easter fail or your greatest uh, success was. I know for us, man, we We're saw all friends here. We saw, like, how many people accept Christ? 395. 395 people across our movement gave their lives to Jesus. Raised their hand when, when invited to Man, accept Christ. That was awesome. That, that, was we awesome. that we that, know of. And there's nothing, that's one of the things I love most about being a worship leader, is you get to see that happen. Hey, you're I'm on stage yes, while that, ha that happens. Is you get awesome. to watch people. That is awesome, and yeah. it's something we should celebrate. But I do want to say something to that effect. Uh, our church is a large church, multi-site church. How many people did we have come to our Easter service overall? I don't even know what our Maybe seven was. or eight thousand? Seven or eight grand, yeah. Uh, and so you may be sitting there thinking, I'm, one person raised their hand. That is something to celebrate. That is very much so. So like, when you hear, when you see people say statistics like 500 people accepted yeah. Christ, and or yeah. like, we're going to do baptisms next weekend. Yeah. Like, we baptized 300 oh, people yeah. this Sunday. Yeah, this yeah. Sunday. <laughs> um, and we baptize 300 people, and you're like, our baptisms are like one whenever one person wants to get baptized. It can be discouraging. I don't know why I went here with this. Yeah. But I just want to say, like, if you're a church of 50 people and one person raised their hand to accept Jesus as their Savior, that's awesome. That's probably about the same, you know, uh, percentage. Ratio. As, yeah. Ratio is what you, a large church would see when, you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds. So... Uh, I don't know why I immediately went there. I just well, it reminds me of the scripture in Luke, uh, the widow's mite, the widow that yeah. gave only two, yeah. uh, two little pieces of uh, money that she had, while everybody else was given all this money, and Jesus was like, "She's giving more than anyone else." So it, it really is about um, using what you have. Yeah, and giving what you giving have. what you have, yeah. and so and if you're a church of twenty five people, be... and one person accepted Christ. Yeah. That's unbelievably amazing. So, mm -hmm. hey, Dave, Bookout's watching. I know why I went. Look there. out in the place. I know why I went there is because I used to be at a church of twenty-five people, thirty people, and it's like you would read these huge statistics, and it was it could be discouraging. I shared with um my team last night. Um, I I I took what we celebrate on Easter. Mm -hmm. Um, we had rehearsal, so for Devo, I was, I said, you know, the cool thing about following Jesus is. He doesn't just promise us eternal life. He tells us that, that we will have life and life more abundantly. To the fullest. To the and fullest. Some, and mm. some and some I like that too. Mm -hmm. And I reminded them, I was like... That means here on the earth, not in heaven. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I reminded them that the things that we have, every good and perfect gift is from God. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, I, I know about myself, like when things go well, sometimes I forget to say, God, thank you for... Mm -hmm this 
and like I just got a grill yeah. on Monday and like I was like I like thank God for the fact that I could get a grill yes. and I was Amen. like praise Delicious. is there is power yeah. in praise yeah. and, and and thanking God for mm-hmm. things and giving him glory and honor and I said you know in this instance when we're when we're talking right here when everybody just share something they're thankful for I said let's say good is not as ranked highly as great let's say for this instance I said, so like, even if all you can say is, I want to thank God for a good thing, not like a great or amazing thing. Yeah. Like I said, because all of us, if we plot out our lives on a map, are going to see that the highest moments and the lowest moments, it all looks like hills and valleys. And we're all going to be traversing up a mountain at some point <clears throat> or at the top of one looking down or we're in a valley and we're looking mm. back up. And I said, we're all going to be doing that. And so the greatest thing we can actually ask God for sometimes is probably perspective mm. to understand that where we're at and this is applies to what you were thinking brian and you, what you were saying that's why i brought it up yeah that's um, really good was that perspective is going to be way more powerful than anything god can give us at times i think yeah because if you get perspective on what god has you in and where he has you and what he's using you to do you're not going to care about so, so many things. Because mm. I used to get so hung up on what I saw friends from college doing. And it's not to say that what I'm doing is less than them. And it's not to say that what they're doing is less than me or anything. But there were times where I was like, I want to do that. Like, why do I get stuck doing this? Like, why do I have to make coffee all the time? Like, mm. I was like, like, but then God would provide perspective yeah. and remind me that, I, mm. you know, I felt like, you know, like David waited how many years as a shepherd before he got brought into a, be a king? And shepherds yeah, were like long time. gross, gross, gross. Long time. So like perspective. So yeah. I'm done preaching. Um, hey. If you want to collect an offering. <laughs> nice. I'm going to um, piggyback on that and I'm going to give you guys a free tip that's worth some money. Oh, let's do it. You ready for this? You can turn in that into a sermon series. Just pitch it to your pastor. Call it Double Vision. Because we've done it at our church. But one of my old pastors at a church that I worked at before. Feel uh, my eyes. Yes. So I'm going there. I got creative elements already in the bag Brad, for you. What is in that hey, drink? Dude? Hey, let me talk. I haven't eaten today and I've hey, had pre workout and that coffee. Is not Stop good. being rude and let Oh, me I had a shot of espresso this morning, hey. too. Everybody plus one every time Brad interrupts Brian. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, sorry. Do the same thing for any time Brian interrupts me. <laughs> okay, so you, you do a sermon series called Double Vision, and uh, your, your pastor talks to your congregation about how it's important to have double vision, to see the world through, through your own human eyes and perspective, but seek to see it through God's eyes and perspective as well, because the mind of God is very different than ours, and that's what Brad was talking about. Like, the things that you should take joy and comfort in are in God's eyes are very different than the world's eyes and you can also uh, do a foreigner song as a creative element opener mm. and do double vision by foreigner <laughs> and everybody over 35 in your congregation will yeah. love you for it everybody between 35 and 55 yeah. will love you for it yeah. everyone else will be like why are they what Heretics. is this is this, hey, a, is this a new Bethel song I gotta share something. Can I share something? <laughs> we got some super chats we need to, to uh, talk okay. about. Too. Look, you corral the super chats. I want to share. This, I'm not exaggerating, guys. Okay. When I tell you this Easter, I experienced the single greatest experience in my entire ministry life. Really? Yeah. You know, we had all these big services. I know you've got some big yeah. ones. We, we did all these big, yeah. huge services yeah. in the, inside the big auditorium, and it was awesome and stuff. But we also did a sunrise service outside. Okay, so we did like a a early morning, I think 6.30 sunrise service. I led worship acoustic. It was me and just Cajon bass and another vocalist. Guys, I'm telling you. So we started at 6.30. The sun was behind us. We had a cross on stage outside Pastor Benji. It was cold. It was kind of chilly, right? So we were having fun. It was super laid back. The sun comes up and stays behind a cloud. Mm -hmm. So the whole entire message, we all have shade. At the end of our message, we do communion. Pastor Benji gives a salvation call for people to accept Christ. He finishes the prayer, and right as he says amen, Mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys, I'm not exaggeration. The clouds move, and the sun beams down on us. I can feel the heat on my back, and everyone lights up. And people start clapping, praising God, I saw people laughing. I saw people crying. 
I have never in my life, like, I was looking at Angelo, our bass player, and, like, he was getting teary-eyed. I've never in my life been in a moment where I just felt like God was saying, hey, I'm right here. Mm. I know what you guys are doing. And, and, and it's like Jesus was reminding us, like, the astronomical probability of that happening at that exact same time. Yeah, and, and I just remember our, our staff that was out there and the people that were out there. It was such a unique experience. So we got to do that before we even went in and did the other two services. And I'm telling you, like, I, it was, I've never felt the Holy Spirit and God moving like we did. We were speechless. And um, I'm trying to describe it, but you can't even describe mm. um, the presence, the palpable presence of God. And, it, and for me, it was very encouraging. It was just God reminded me that, like, dude, I'm real and I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, so it was super, super awesome. That is cool. All right, so here's some super chat thank yous. Uh, Lambertones, Curtis, Curtis Lamberton. Curtis, you when you're going to send me my gold, Les Paul pickups. Oh, Curtis doesn't <laughs> know you want those. <laughs> well, he, should, he does now. <laughs> Fuller would like some gold crema pickup. Mm. Probably yes. wants grinders. In my 50th anniversary or 100th anniversary so Epiphan Les Paul. Fuller has probably played that grinders. one. It's similar like that. Fuller's played that one and we, we did some classic rock. Oh my gosh, dude. It, they, we were rocking. We brought the heat, man. We were rocking it, dude. The grinders might be what you want, but that Hoagies thing and was grinders. pretty awesome. Hoagies. Grinders are his more higher output. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're more. Yeah. What's in that one? Crema. Curtis, tell us about those are cremas. Those sound amazing. Though. Yeah, they do. That, those are the ones I want. Like. Yeah, Lambertone's like. pickups. I'm, sure I'm just going to give... Curtis <laughs> gave us a super chat, <laughs> and he had a really... Had, and Curtis had a really I'm insightful comment uh, that I'll talk about. But uh, Curtis with the super chat, let me just take a moment. This was unprovoked. Curtis didn't ask for this. But um, you guys, if you've watched the channel, you know that Brad and I did like this Epiphone upgrade project with the Lambertone Kramas. And Single pickups. best video you guys have ever done. <laughs> well, it was three videos. so That's what I mean. Thanks mm -hmm. for paying attention and following along. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is I played it. Like feisty All I know is I played it. on to you for interrupting me. People's Coffee also has crack cocaine in it, I think. <laughs> so, I'm joking. Why are you trying to take this from those me? <laughs> okay, so I have two sets of Lambertones in this room. I have the Kramas, and I have his Blondie Telecaster pickups from Lambertones. And they are some of the best pickups I've ever heard in my entire life. They're awesome. That Les Paul is awesome. The How guy, much was that Les Paul when you bought it, Brian? $300. 300 yes. bucks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is now something else. Nice. All right, so Curtis, thank you for the super chat. Um, Curtis said this, by the way, or Lambertones. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind that I'm referring to him as in his, uh, as his first name. I assume that's him I, running it. I, yeah. I'm sure that's okay. <laughs> Remember that this weekend is probably even more important than Easter mm. because people are coming back to see if y'all are for real, which is true. So if you have a lot of guests come into your into your church, uh, a lot of a lot of, and if they had a great experience, they'd be like, you know, especially on Easter and Christmas, a lot of times you got a lot of people who have maybe don't like to go to church for whatever reason. But maybe they like it. Lots of reasons. And they're like, I yeah. might, I might this, come back. I might come back. You know, or like a lot of times I think it's like somebody, you, you have a family with kids and, and the family's like, you know what, we should really get our kids in church. <laughs> and the kids loved it. Yeah. Right. Or something. I think that's a very common thing. Uh, so just uh, don't take next week, this, this coming Sunday off. Don't, yeah. don't fall flat because. Don't say we already did it and mm -hmm. now we can just do an easy Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because people, people may be coming back just to see. Is this? It, are do these people really believe in what yeah. I, they said they did? That's a really good point, and also it's a it's a good reason to why you know sometimes on Easter we try to do the most craziest, outlandish, mm -hmm. like we were talking earlier, and then like so people come and they get that experience, and then the next week it's just like a guy and his acoustic guitar, yeah. Which I think it's why it's important to not like overdo stuff, yeah. Like try to be authentic when you're. I mean, be a, a little extra, right? Because it's Easter, it's Easter. Yeah. but don't go crazy and rent like a 80 piece orchestra and then the next week like Have just one, a guy and his guitar guy, like, it's like hey I feel like that's a bait and off. switch yeah. yeah uh Brad Miller uh thank you for the super chat he said he really loved the I'll come back to that one okay he really loved the live rehearsal we haven't forgotten you Derek of the Easter service so uh at our rehearsal no it was run through well that was at rehearsal Sunday though. it was Saturday evening before was it on Saturday? Yeah, yeah. Because I was at the in the comments. Yeah. I was at the gym, and I was moderating the chat, yeah. answering questions That's while right. Brian was 
uh, doing which, run through, which I and I was doing it in between sets. It was perfect. That yeah, was <laughs> funny. That was funny. Um, uh, yeah, so. I say something else too. It was cool. Brad got Brad came Saturday night to the Easter service, mm-hmm. and it was like really cool. A to have you hanging out with us, chilling, mm-hmm. and I, I'd be interested to see what your experience was like. Just being able to worship, like to to watch an Easter service and not have to because knowing you're gonna have to execute all the stuff the yeah. next day. Because yeah. I think a lot of our folks probably don't get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe talk about the value of that too. Yeah. Because I think we miss that as worship leaders. Yeah. We lead worship 90 weeks in a row and then we're like, oh yeah, I don't really go to church. I'm just a worship leader. Yeah. Right. But well, we can. Let me, let's come back to that. Yeah. Um, so Brad was saying that he enjoyed that live. So what I did was that all, we have a run through before all of our services. It's like a full production everything the whole thing like we just do it like it's a service basically actual thing minus preaching we don't sit through the whole yeah, we message, don't do the message. <laughs> yeah um and so i just brought a little phone stand with me and set an iphone up there and streamed it to youtube which is a an, something that i wanted to try because it's something i thought about doing a lot like to stream live uh certain elements of our preparation or services just so you guys can see what happens like behind the scenes um <laughs> some of the guys were like, I don't know if you should do that. What if somebody says something? And I'm like, what Who is? What would you say? They probably shouldn't say what it if, regardless. Yeah. What if they sing Reckless Love or what something? If, yeah, like, or like, what if we mess up? Or what if we have to work on something? I'm like, well, I, and I thought to myself, like, well, do we want, do people assume that we're perfect? No. Okay. But uh, anyway, that, that run through went on without a hitch, though. Yeah. Uh, Derek, thank you for your super chat. Derek Berlay. Uh, he has a question. Barely, what, my favorite do, French name. What do you do as a worship leader? Uh, before we get to this, let me ask you guys a quick question. I'm looking at audio levels and they look really low. They do look low. For some reason. Is the audio the same as it typically is? Let us know how the audio is in the stream. I feel like every weekend or every time we go live, I'm like dealing with some sort of technical issue. Although I do the same exact settings and setup every time. Let us know. The, uh, the software may be lying to us over here. Um, okay, so Derek says this. What do you do as a worship leader when people know, in all caps, people know changes need to be made but are unwilling to enact the change? Mm. And he said, here's a coffee donation for you boys. All right. Oh, wow. Wow. The, there's, a, I think, a module in the worship manual about this. Uh, Derek, yeah. I think There's we, a lot of layers to that question. Yeah. So right? the, we need some more information. Who are the people that know? Are they staff people? Yeah, yeah. Are they volunteers? Because the reality is this. Everyone in, on your team wants to change something. Yeah. We all want change, right? Right. Uh, if I go to Brad's church, I'm going to probably want to change something, but that might not be my role. We'll see what happens on sun- next Sunday yeah, when he's I'll be, with me. I, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Brad and I are rocking together next week at Hillsborough. It's like it's been the first oh time in years. You guys I can't wait. together in Hillsborough? Yeah. For the first time you in years. You should tell LA, LA you're not feeling good and you should come to Hillsborough. I, love I don't think he's watching. Dave's watching, though. He'll know. Dave, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> when is it? The 5th. Next Sunday. Yeah. I'll be in Hillsborough on the um, 5th, Dave. So, um... You're not my boss. I don't think yeah, I have room. Do what I want. You're not the boss of me. I don't think I have room, to be honest. Yeah, we'll make room. I schedule four weeks out, so I'm already That's ready pro. for that week. That's pro. <laughs> um, I'll, come, I'll come help you out one of these weeks. So change. So change. I'm so Making blessed. change. <laughs> Making change. Um, the reality is, I don't think... Here's the thing. Someone, no someone, um... Energy. Someone uh, put on Facebook, I yeah. think you guys saw it, uh, on one of the threads the other day... What, what have you wanted to say to your team? What would you want to say to your team if you can? You know, that was like the question. And um, my response was like, if I have something to say to my team that's going to make them better, I'm going to say it. Yeah. I will say it in a nice way. You know, but, but like being rude and stuff like that is really about how you approach things and how you do things. And the same concept with change. Like if some, if a change, on, if you know that a change is going to make your ministry better, i.e. going to help you reach more people for Jesus and accomplish the vision of your church, then you should make that change. Yeah. And I would even go further as saying, shame on you for not making that change. Cause if you, it's like, if you know something is right and you do it, or you don't do it, that's like the same thing as doing something wrong. So if you know there's a change, you should pioneer that change and fight for it. Now, there's boundaries, right? You I might want to change Brad, something. Brad has a question. 
But Brad no, Friend no, has a question. Ahead. You there's boundaries. Like I may want to change something, and it might be a preference. That's different. Like I feel like our music should be more rock driven, mm-hmm. or I feel like we should do more of an EDM vibe. That's totally different. But if you if there's a change your church needs to make, and your pastor and and you're the worship leader, and you both agree that that change needs to make, you got to come up with a plan to make that change happen. Yeah, Derek and Derek has has given us a few follow up comments. He said the congregation and the staff both know the church needs to change culture. Congregation has a hard time accepting when the changes are made. I was yeah. in a situation yeah. like this. I've talked about this on the channel before. The church, I was at a couple churches before I came to New Hope. One of them was like, we wanted to appeal. It's a very classic situation. I think a lot of people find themselves in. We wanted to appeal to younger people, uh, f- families with young kids. Mm wanted to have a certain vibe and culture but like nobody in the church wanted that <laughs> no they wanted it oh. but they didn't like they it wasn't who they were sure so it wasn't authentic right. like most yeah. of the church was like people in their 50s and 60s right. but they wanted it to be a church of people in their 30s and yeah. 40s yeah it's really hard to be yeah. something that you're not that's what i'm good. trying to say that's good and so sure. like you know, if you're Derek, I don't know your situation, but if there are if there are churches out there and you're like, we want to we want to have twenty people, twenty some year old people come in, but like everyone on your stage is forties and fifties, maybe twenty twenty year olds are gonna identify with that, but yeah. probably not, yeah. because people are gonna identify with people who are like them, yeah, right, and so. Um, that's it's why really, diversity it's is so a huge really for us hard thing, stages. Bill, because yeah. churches know that like yeah. where the culture's going. Yeah. But I will encourage you to, to say like, I'm I'm sure that what whatever the makeup and culture of your church is, there are people out there who yeah. are like you, yeah. who God desires for them to be found. Yeah, right. Yeah, who they're lost. Yeah, and that's who that's I don't know yeah. I don't know if that's helpful yeah. or not. That's a tough one though. Well, we, navigating we, change is an art. You know, it has, um, you have to do you, vision the right reality now. is everyone, I mean, most normal people want a better reality. So if, if the current reality is not great, your job to change becomes paint a picture. Bill Hybels talks about this, uh, paint a picture of what the future looks like in a way that people get excited That's about it yeah. and then vision. figuring out here's where we are. Now you lead strong enough to get from A to B, most people will want to go with you. Yeah. Um, but what happens is when you start moving people's cheese, um, you read, there's a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Great book to read if you're, yeah. if you're trying to navigate change. It is change. short, short, short. Yeah, super short. Super short. Um, but yeah, so nav- learning how to navigate that change is really important. You got to start yeah. small. Small changes, um, you know. But if you have a culture that hasn't changed anything mm-hmm. in two decades... The smallest change, will, people will get in an uproar. Yeah. But if you build a culture where change is normal, then people start getting used to that. Um, so you just got to balance it out. But at the end of the day, I think this. I would rather die on the hill of changing things to make it better than to stay the same knowing that I'm not reaching my yeah. potential. And not changing just for the sake of change. Mm-hmm. And, but you set this up perfectly because I was going to say, I think this is also Craig Rochelle. Leaders define reality. In other words, they look at the situation and they say, this is what's happening. And they say, this is good or this is bad mm-hmm. or this needs to change. That's good. And if, that if there's something... That song is bad. That song, this muffin <laughs> tastes bad. <laughs> uh, leaders leaders define reality. Service. And, um, <laughs> you know, Derek, I don't know what your position may be, but like... You can still be a leader and step up and say, hey, look, this is a reality I see happening for us. And I'll say that, you know, when it comes to change, Jonah, all right, Jonah is actually a pretty bad example, which is encouraging for us. Jonah knew what God wanted him to do, and he did the Mm -hmm. exact opposite, right? So then Jonah's on this boat, this storm is happening, and he's like certain that like, Either he's gonna die, or he's gonna end up like situation. he's gonna end up being the reason why all these guys in this boat die, mm-hmm. right? So Jonah initiates change, yes. and he says, "Throw me over at his own sacrifice." At his own sacrifice, yeah, that's good. Now this is kind of a bizarre example, but the point is, is Jonah's heart behind this was, "I know I messed up, and I got to do something about it." 
Mm. And God sent this creature to swallow him and take care of him, right? And so I think what it what that can speak to for us is if we see a situation that needs to be addressed, if our whole heart is to do something to correct it in a matter that glorifies God, I don't think you can go wrong. That's and, good. and knowing that if you're going to be so taking yeah. the initiative to carry out a purpose and to make change and do something for the betterment of your team and your people and your church, yeah. yourself, your own life, your family, your wife, your spouse, whatever... Like, if God sent this creature to save Jonah, who deliberately 180 degree disobeyed him, <laughs> and then decided, I need to do something about the situation we're in, I, I think I think the initiative we take to do something that honors God, even if we're like, I feel like God's in this, but I can't tell for sure, because oh, yeah. sometimes we, we have That's a good. hard time identifying God's voice. I think if you just take the step forward, it's better than taking a step back or better than standing still. That's good so. stuff. The Bible has really good stuff. The in Bible, it. yeah. it's like the Bible like <laughs> was like written to help us. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, there, An- Annie says this is this is a gr- this is we got to address this. Annie says so. Then do we bypass our worship pastor and go straight to the pastor? Absolutely not. Do not do that. Well, always go to that the worship pastor first. first. And if you can't find resolve in the corporate world, they call it filing a grievance. <laughs> Matthew 18. Yeah. If you can't connect with them, then what I would do is then I would let them know, hey, I just feel like we're not making much ground. I would like to bring the pastor into this conversation. But keep them in it. But keep them in it. Keep, keep them, them in it. Yeah. Um, and if they freak out about that, then you may go to the pastor. But do your best to, to, me. to keep people involved. I'm on this carpet <laughs> yeah. over here, and it's like I'm... A, Ron Dorco. So hey, I've got I've seen some comments that the the audio is lower than normal. Dave Bookout said it was low too. So I don't know. Yeah. I tried yeah, to raise. Yeah, we it love a you all, bit. but we definitely trust Dave. So <laughs> <laughs> I tried to raise it. I don't yeah. know what's. Going is the on pad there. on the four fourteen? No, no, it's not that because oh, okay. it, if it goes into the yeah, Apollo, sure. it's fine. But it's okay. like it's the software where it's getting okay. It's something well, get attenuated. Uh, people can turn up their. Somebody said that they were listening and then something they played something on Spotify. And it, and it was cranking? Death. Well, why are you trying to listen to Spotify Yo, while bro, we're talking? What are you cranking ACDC while well, Brad's talking about jo- hey, Jonah? Hey, we're 27 uh, I minutes. I found out that Australia is called ACDC Akadaka. That's, That's kind of cool. Thank you, Conan. <laughs> yes, Conan. <laughs> uh, so we're 27 minutes in. Do you think we should talk about what people imitate what you celebrate means? We haven't talked about it yet, have we? Uh, <laughs> We, I mean, we've been celebrating. Kind of. Right, we've been celebrating. Well, here's, yeah, here's yeah. the, the principle. Hey, you know what? Here, yeah, go ahead. You go with the principle. Okay, so the, and principle, then I got the principle is this. Um, as a staff and as leaders in your church, you need to celebrate when things happen that are good. A lot of times what will happen is, like you have a service, you have a Sunday like Easter Sunday, and somebody accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior. And like it happens, they maybe they raise their hand or whatever, and then like, Nobody ever talks about it again. Hopefully you come beside that person and help, you know, develop a relationship with them and help them find a life group or something, a discipleship. But like as a church or as a staff, like you don't really talk about it. And as a church body, you don't talk about it. And uh, I think you miss a massive opportunity when you do that because if you celebrate things, if you celebrate things... Um, what are you guys talking about? Avengers? Well, somebody, somebody said something and so, I preemptively uh, said, Do not see, spoil it. Zach this said, for us. Zach says, Endgame was lit. And, and I'm will, like, If you say one more, you're if getting, you say one more, out, yeah. you are getting no, blocked no, from banned. everything. <laughs> banned. Out of, out of respect. I yeah. don't care. So, I haven't but, even seen the other the one. Guys, I haven't seen the one with Thanos, the first one with him. Can I yet. tell you guys a secret? Well, I was. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. It's about Endgame. No, don't. Okay, okay. You want to tell well, us a secret well, no, like, on a live stream with a few hundred people watching? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know a woman that that's really close to me that might be taking her kids out of school in an hour to go see Endgame. I know that woman might. Be. I, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? That's so cool. Yeah. I know, too, a Rican I know a 10 and a 9 year old who are super I stoked think that right it, now. I think that yeah. it undermines our educational system. I think it does too and I think we should do reckless love. <laughs> right, <go ahead. laughs> okay, so um, so when something good happens in your church, whether it's an Easter Sunday thing and people accept Jesus Christ, whether you guys did a new song and people engaged with it, 
or you know um, whether you did like a big creative element and it went off without a hitch and a lot of people pulled a lot of things together to make it happen you need to celebrate it and find ways find creative ways to celebrate that involve your church body so one way we like to do Mm. this is uh, life change when 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 you see a person and we did this on Easter Sunday actually when a person goes through a life like they Mm. go from one point in life they have an encounter with Jesus. He, Jesus changes their life, and now their life looks different, and they're on fire for Christ, right? Mm-hmm. That's amazing, you need yeah. to find a way to put that on display for yes. your church. Yes. So the way we did it on Easter was we filmed testimony videos, and it can be you can do it with an iPhone. Hashtag Dave book out Cody Piper and Jesse Henning. Dave, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. And Ron Dorco, who's in the. Yeah, was he in He's it? in our thread, and he was the he one was one of, of the, the testimonies. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So Ron, uh, cool. that was this. Mo- those moments are so powerful. Thank you for thank you for sharing your story with us, Ron. That was with our entire church. Um, but what it does is it communicates to your congregation we're a part of something that's way bigger than ourselves, like and way bigger than just this. You know, a group of people meeting together. Um, church is something way bigger than that, and God uses it to to change to change the destiny of people's yeah. lives forever. Yeah, mm. and you put that, you celebrate it by putting that on display, and it and it, and it causes the people in yes. the congregation, on the staff, anyone yes. who witnesses that celebration. Yes, it causes them to want to imitate that. Yes, in their lives, and it causes people to be more on vision for the church, for Jesus in their own lives. Um, it's a really, really powerful thing. And it can be anything. It can be like, uh, like hopefully you guys got to get, well, I don't, I don't know what you guys did on staff on Wednesday when you got together. We talked staff. about a lot of things. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like we did you, celebrate. We did celebrate. But like if you did something awesome on a creative yeah. standpoint, your creative team, get together and like as the celebrate. leader, yeah, like Just b- give them food and up, like man. throw a little yeah, party yeah. and talk about how awesome yeah. that was. Yeah. And like... That'll get people... Yeah. That way, next time you talk about doing yeah. a big creative element, people aren't thinking yeah. like, oh gosh, I had to yeah. stay up till 2 yeah. in the morning editing a video. Yeah. They're thinking like, man, that was great, yes. and we got to celebrate what God did through it. Yeah. Um, and it gets people more excited yeah. to do it again. It also makes the frustrations... Because, I mean, hey, listen, you might have experienced a ton of frustrations. We had a ton of frustrations over the last couple of weeks with like just getting arrangements together and all this stuff, but... But it reminds you that all those frustrations are worth it. When yes. a person, when one person raises their hand and changes their life and commits it to Jesus because mm-hmm. of effort you put in or a frustration you dealt with, what a win! What, how worth it is that? Yeah, absolutely. and so, so that's that's incredible. The way I view that phrase, "people imitate what we celebrate," is mm-hmm. imagine you're in elementary school and your teacher decides to give uh, one of your classmates a prize because of, you know, like, as a kid, you're, like, thinking, like, a piece of a candy is pretty dope. Kids are like, I want a piece of candy in school. I don't know why, but that's how we are, right? Mm-hmm. Like, your teacher gives a kid a piece of candy because they did something good. Yeah. You are sitting there thinking, I want candy. <laughs> so you see, I see what they did. If I do something like what they did, you I'll get candy. In school, yeah. If if you if you you say if I do what that other kid did, I'm gonna get candy. Now this is kind of simp- simplifying this way too much, mm-hmm. but the way I see that is like when you celebrate a volunteer, that or you celebrate people or you celebrate what happened at church or whatever, people see what your standard is for saying something's great or mm-hmm. awesome, and or they see like we we talk about praising people publicly and confronting them privately. Mm -hmm. Like, people at the very root of everything, I think everybody would agree that they want to feel appreciated. Like, nobody's going to say, I would would, uh, prefer to be unappreciated. Yeah, right. Don't value me, please. Yeah, please, don't value me. (laughs) Now, my wife is a prime example. She would absolutely hate if I publicly... Some people don't like it. Yeah, she 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 absolutely would prefer that I appreciate her, though. I just don't have to Mm -hmm. say it. Yeah, that's good. good. (laughs) So... I think of this, people imitate what we celebrate, the same way I think about when I was a kid and a teacher gave somebody candy. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's not patronizing, it's not condescending, 
all we're doing is we're we're bringing attention to the things that we think propel our ministry forward, and yeah. we're bringing attention to things that uh, we want to see more regularly because it's the same idea. People see that and they're like, that is something they value. So if you're wondering why nothing tends to go right or it doesn't go the way you want it to go, do you make sure you constantly let people know that something that happened is the way you prefer it to go? Mm. Because if you celebrate that, people are going to catch on and realize, oh, like, so you don't have to go and correct constantly. You're not correcting at all. All you're doing is just drawing attention. And like, that's way easier mm. than trying to c- correct things that are going wrong because, and this is probably also Craig Rochelle, the culture you have is the culture you hilarious. created. Like you get the yeah, culture you, you create, tolerate. Yeah, yeah. You create your culture or something like that. I'm, yeah, I wish I could say, say it more that. fluidly. But like if you're looking around, especially as a leader, and you're like, mm. this place is a mess. Well, it's your fault. It's, it's probably, it's is, probably yeah. your fault. And yeah, like yeah. not to be discouraging, but like that's the, bottom line. that's the bottom line. Like you're the leader for a reason. And so if you're constantly celebrating the good things and you're on, yes. a, on the side, you're all, pulling people aside and saying yeah. things that aren't great... Or maybe if it's a team collective thing, like this, the energy wasn't there. Like, yes. yeah, you should correct it right there in that moment. But like the culture you get is the culture you mm. tolerate. So yeah. Yeah. if you celebrate often yes, and say like, man, this past Sunday incredible. was incredible because of X, Y, Z. This person did this and it was incredible. We were all locked in and it, like all those things, like you're going to see, it's not too late to start. Like start right now. Like this Sunday whether it's in your congregation or your team, like tell them the things that you think are awesome and thank people for it and make mm-hmm. it a habit right. because that's how you're going to create good culture is because the things mm-hmm. you're celebrating, people are going to yeah. end up le- replicating, yeah, imitating. That's good. That's, good. that's cool. Good. That's good it. stuff. That's, that's so to celebrate. Imitate what you celebrate. People imitate what you celebrate. All right, we're done. See you later. We're going to uh, cheeseburgers. And there's an old cliche that says, oh, cheeseburger. Um, stop and smell the roses. Without a bun, probably. Mm. You guys are all up. I think Stoke is is is. We doing, had two days what? off. Is doing something to their we, coffee. We, we didn't, we're all like we had <laughs> Monday and Tuesday off, so we, we got need to, to rest. back off the Stoke. Step away from the Stoke. Um, uh, life in life they say stop and smell the roses. That's what mm-hmm. it is. Stop and smell the roses with your team, man. Celebrate, celebrate. Mm. Um, what was that? Uh, there is. Oh yeah, so some people been asking about the New Hope original song, oh, yeah. Faithful. Look it. It is on Spotify right now. You can go to Spotify. Just search New Hope Worship. There's four songs on there. There's a. I'm gonna try and put a link in the comments. Cool. There's a song that L.A. and Majesty and Raven wrote called "Unending Pursuit." Wow. Go check it out. Um, Speaking of that, Stephen says, "Hey, um, how do you know when you have an original song you want to record, but not sure people are gonna how people are gonna feel about it?" Um, A. Record it. You know, get your iPhone, record it. Yeah. Play it for some friends first. Um, (laughs) Play it for, uh, you know, some musicians on your team. Don't just, like, use the church as a forum to showcase your song because it might be terrible. Um, And you don't want that to be the stage that you find out. So play it for some friends. uh, Maybe throw it in a forum and, and get some feedback. And then take that feedback, tweak it, change it. Listen, great songs are not written. They are rewritten. Mm. So so just just tweak it. Don't be afraid to to um, make changes and stuff. And if five people say, "Yeah, this part is weird," listen to them and change it and make it less weird. And then when you feel like, excuse me, you're ready, then maybe bring it to the band mm-hmm. and see how they feel, and then go for it and see what happens. You never know. You might have the best newest song ever. And I learned this from uh, Todd Fields. He came and hung Todd. out with us. And I, I will never forget this. He said, and then, a, you know, whether you're trying to test out a new song that, like, you wrote, or if you're trying to test out a song that you want to introduce to a congregation, you're a little unsure about it, do it do it for students first. Mm. Because if you can get them to engage, you could probably get that's adults pro, to engage. That's, pro that's like a pro right move, because students can that's be... That's scary, too. They'll be like, get off the stage! It is. Yeah, the students... Worst song I ever students heard! Students won't hold back. <laughs> They'll just stand there. They'll, they'll, they will literally pull out their phones and not give two flying flips in front of oh, you in worship. Yeah. Like, Adults have a little more... Yeah. Just what's the word? Of, uh, uh, tact? Uh, my, yeah, yeah, tact. tact. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I said a little more. Yeah, yeah there. Yeah, so there, there, what adults there are, talked it's about. funny. There are times where I'm on stage and like I'm not gonna like I'm never gonna call a person out for bringing their phone up during worship. I'm never gonna say anything. Yeah. But it's like the room's completely dark and all you see is like in the corner of your eye you see it, like a light on somebody's face and it's like the glory and, of the <laughs> Lord shining in <laughs> your face, Brad. They they were just with Jesus. Yeah. That's why it's like Moses situation. Hey, speaking of celebrating, uh, can I celebrate somebody? Uh, there's a guy in our ch- ch- uh, forum named Ray. Uh, he's a, a Latino keyboard player, phenomenal. You guys all know him. Uh, and Ray sometimes was, Ray was in the chat. He yeah, he's in the chat. Yeah. Jimmy Rodriguez is sometimes in our chat. They are launching tonight. Oh, the, whatever they're gonna do is gonna. Uh, be yeah, next they are. Level they are launching a Spanish ministry at our church. Oh, nice. And um, I, it's gonna be amazing. But I can tell you, the music is gonna be ridiculous. Those guys are um, unbelievable. So I got your click tracks, Ray. <laughs> I'm gonna email them to you uh, in about an hour. If anyone so you know, doesn't need yeah. a click track, it's, it's those, guys. those guys are ridiculous. Yeah. The, so celebrate, man. That's that's awesome. What God is doing. Lauren yeah. Ward says, "Unending Pursuit" is her Lauren. favorite. Is that Lauren from I, New Hope? I think so. Oh, didn't met, she play with you I Wednesday? I met Lauren on Wednesday. Yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome. Hey, Lauren. Yeah. She did a great job. She's playing acoustic guitar. She sings. She's on our team. She, Lauren, do you, now if you're still here, Lauren, you lead up in uh, students sometimes? Does she lead for students sometimes? I think so. Sounds familiar. So I used to lead up there in students, Lauren, if you're, if you're listening. I'm having a conversation with Lauren here. That's uh, right, yeah. Um, I used to lead up there back when we had coffee house. I led for students. And so um, when you were talking about uh, doing a song for students, they're not going to hold like. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 The students are awesome. They'll tell you. Like yeah, that's, yeah, that's Lauren. She says, hey. They'll tell you. Like um, so for, yeah, for a couple of years, I led worship for students up there. And uh, I always think back. One of, the, one of the times when I was trying to get them to like get to start, I told them to, to turn off the gaming machines. <laughs> I thought terrible like, idea. How old am I? <laughs> like, you said them, gaming machines. I told them to g- turn off the gaming machines. I don't know Brian. what I was thinking. I have one over You're there. You're not allowed to talk for I five have, minutes. I have a gaming machine over there, <laughs> like an Xbox. <laughs> Does that get on the internet? And the emails? Do you, do you have the emails? <laughs> wow. Do you log on to www. Oh gosh. Email Lauren said it was amazing. Lauren said it was amazing. awesome. So. Well, Lauren, I felt like a fool when I told those kids to turn off the gaming machines. So take Ryan's advice. Sounds like something my dad would say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> turn off their gaming machines. They're I, from I, the I, devil and they're I, killing your brain. I tried to make fun of myself, yeah. and I don't think that landed either. It was just bad. It was just like... <laughs> You're like, I'm going to stop talking. It was a crash and a burn <laughs> all at the same time. That's funny. We have uh, nine minutes left, guys, if you, if you have any comments or questions um, or anything. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, she said she did lead up there once. That's like my old home away home away from home up there, but I haven't been up there. That's awesome. Um, just speaking on the album, if you want to hear some cool guitars. I Bradford play. did all the guitars. Oh, guitar. uh, all of them? All the electrics. So all of them? Bradford played some what, guitar. What, did you overdub me and not tell I me? I told you I played guitars on Victorious. I'm offended. And I played acoustic. He's offended. I I'm played this spinning. acoustic. I'm assaulted. Whew, I, acoustic. This is not an endorsement by any means, but this is the single greatest recorded acoustic guitar I've ever played in my life. We did a review. I don't know if... Oh if, my uh, gosh. Sometimes, um, sometimes, uh, who is it from McPherson? That hang- Joshua. <sighs> sometimes Joshua from McPherson hangs out in the uh, live stuff here. And uh, mm. Joshua, we so did the geez. review... Wow. Brad and I did the review of that guitar, yeah. and I'm editing it now. Yeah. Um, that guitar does sound ridiculous when you put a mic in front of it. When you it, mic that sucker, recording. holy I mean, it sounds cow. amazing anyway. But uh, if you listen to Unending Pursuit, all the, the link Brian just sent out. That Actually, all the acoustics on the, on the album, but Unending Pursuit is this. And when I started playing it, I was like, like I think I text track. you immediately. Yeah. And I was like, dude, have you got to hear this thing mic'd. Because you guys did like a line-in one, a DI... You played well, it with I've, a DI. I've played it a lot, just plugged in. It has the anthem in it now, right? Yeah. yeah. I've played it a lot in videos, but not mic'd it. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, Fuller mic'd it and put it in a like a, a proper production. Yeah. And, and just a tip for you acoustic guitar players out there, if you are recording, mm-hmm. mic your guitar. Don't record it lined in because it, it, oh, it's, it's never going to... Oh, okay. It's never going to... Or even just bad. a demo. I've seen yeah. some guys recording demos with their acoustics plugged in. 
Like, just use a mic. Just use a mic. It'll sound way better. Lauren asks if she can play the McPherson sometime. Uh, maybe I'll bring it on Sunday. Yes, yeah, so you just need a $5,000 deposit. Actually, no, um, it's, <laughs> it's far less than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Lauren, I'll bring it sometime. Maybe I'll bring it Sunday morning. Yeah. If you want to play yeah. it, you can play it. You know what, though? Uh, speaking of Brad's guitar parts, um, you got to do... I don't know if you've done this yet. Uh, obviously, don't pay attention. Have you done any videos on just swells? Yeah, kind of. Because every really. swell track on the album, I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm turning this bad boy up. That was like the Brad greatest. And I, we, I hope that we've got swells down. <laughs> Dude. Brad does swells on Brad is the master of the swell. That was amazing. Jamie says, does the, does the McPherson have the Anthem SL? Yeah, it is the SL. Um, we're not going to spend much time talking about gear, but... Um, we haven't really talked about gear at all this one. We did last... Our last oh, yeah. live stream was all gear. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, it has the SL, and they told me that they they couldn't put the full anthem in, and I assume it's because of the different sound hole. Yeah, the like shape. The, it the anthem fit. is is made to fit in a circle sound hole. Well, the little, like, control center the control, yeah. preampy part, yeah. Yeah, so the SL, the SL is the same as the full anthem, it just, yeah. you don't have the blend. So you only have a volume knob, and see, there's a little set screw in there, and the, uh, yeah, that's going to be way out of focus, but... Sure. You can see that it, little yeah. set screw is the blend, <laughs> so um, you can adjust the blend. Sports, you right. just can't do it like on the fly. But what I've found with the anthem is, uh, I usually set it pretty much the same every time. Um, almost all mic, a little bit. I have a, I back it off of the full mic setting just a little bit. Um, that's my own personal preference. And so yeah, the SL is just like a, it's the same, but the microphone and the the whole preamp and everything is the same. Anyway, awesome. excuse me, moving on. Good stuff. Any tips for a 13-year-old student leading worship? Ooh, yeah. Keep doing it. Lots of tips. Boy, where's, where do we begin? Find, here, here's a tip. If you can, find somebody who's, who you admire, who's a worship leader, who has maybe led before, and uh, hopefully maybe someone in your church or someone at a, a local church and ask if you can meet with them like on a regular basis and have them sort of mentor you. That's a great. That's Having great. a mentor is a big, big deal. And for you worship leaders who are, you know, have a lot of experience under your belt, um, find somebody young and mentor them. It's very important. That's that's great. That's great. Uh, Richard asked this question again. I think he asked it earlier. How would you convince your worship leader that we need to diversify from just acoustic guitars up to three um, to include electric guitars? To widen the sound stage. How would you guys do it? If you weren't the worship leader. And what now? Your worship leader, and all your worship every weekend was just three acoustic guitars. Is wow, it just, just that three? makes me want to take an Advil. Just three? Or is it like <laughs> yeah. other instruments and no, three? No, uh, uh, sounds like it's uh, just three. Convince your worship leader that we need to diversify from just acoustic guitars. So yeah, it's so three the guitars. Worship, the worship leader is driving the acoustics. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. yeah, and it's three acoustic guitars. So you want to convince your worship leader? Yeah, that, that you should, hey, maybe one of us play electric. It would depend on the style of music you're doing. Because if you're doing... Here's the question. Do you have a drummer? Because if you don't have a drummer, playing electric guitar is a completely different deal. It is. Because when That's I... true. If I do electric guitar and like an acoustic set, it's like I have like you a real washy, clean sound and swells you're, and single notes. You're very and, good at it. I, I, I love it. I can't. He's do pro. That. I love it. Uh, Brad's pro. I mean, if, if me and Brad went and did a set, I'd be like, Brad, you're playing swells. I'm playing acoustic. <laughs> yeah, but like he plays like, but yeah. Brad, you'll play like these really tasty little like. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. Don't lead bring your parts. tube screamer. It's not lead parts. It's almost yeah. like you're playing rhythm, but you do like some licks inside of it a lot. It's you like play, like, it's like you cool. play different yeah. shapes that are in different. I try places, to so. replicate a keys player in some regards. Yes, okay. that's exactly what you're doing. But with like electric. If yeah. I had three acoustics, I would. If if the three of us were playing acoustic guitar, yeah, all right, I would go. Okay, Brian, you're playing bass. You're playing swells. I'm playing acoustic. Yeah. And now we've just like taken a three acoustic cacophony it, it and turned it into like a really nice, yeah, full sound, right? Yeah. So, but you got to convince your worship leader. What I would do is I would research videos, find other people who are doing that kind of stuff, and just send them to them and say, hey, yeah. listen to how cool this is. What if we tried it? That's the Cinema first step right worship there. tutorials, yeah. electric guitar playthrough playlist, of which yeah. we have many. And That's Brian right. and I, I, the first thing I thought of, because one of my favorite things we've done was when we did It Is Well, 
just you and me, mm-hmm. live. Oh, the Bethel one. Yeah, we did. That it, was the Bethel, awesome. and it was Brian was singing acoustic. I'm sorry, singing and playing acoustic, and, and I did record. electric, and that's what I did. So check out that video because like that's the kind of stuff I love it because like it that was, came we need from to do more of that. We do this afternoon. Okay, that yeah. came. I have my my b board with me. <laughs> oh man, Bradford, the fact that you have a b board. Just makes me happy. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I, I'm all now. You got me all flustered thinking about it. It's such a beautiful <laughs> board. Um, I started the reason why I and I appreciate you guys are very kind to say this, but the reason why I feel like I'm good at that is because mm-hmm. of limited resources. We actually talked about. Yeah. Where, where was it that I was talking about this? That sometimes constraint is actually better for creativity yeah. mm-hmm. than freedom because absolute freedom. Like you just you you can get overwhelmed. Oh, yes. You can do anything. Yeah, agreed. So yeah. when I was in college and I was starting to do more with electric guitar, I would hear mm-hmm. and see other people, other worship teams leading, and I'm like, man, I want pads, but we don't have a keys player, mm. or we have someone to play keys, yep. but we have a Casio keyboard that costs 150 bucks and it doesn't bad. have a pad sound, and so mm-hmm. that restraint, mm-hmm. like. <laughs> that that restriction Give me a big sky. <laughs> that restriction meant I had to figure out how to fill that space up and like mm-hmm. I didn't have like I mean Strymon didn't even exist at this point so like I was using an RV5 and like two different delay pedals a Line 6 DL4 I would love to have another DL4 mm-hmm. uh, and a Boss DD20 and I would stack everything mm-hmm. to create this washy sound and do swells to kind of imitate like what a pads player would do and then a keys player would do. Yeah. And so those That's limitations good. forced me to get better because now sometimes I feel like I'm not creative and I have all this gear. That's yeah. why I'm not creative is because mm-hmm. I have all this gear. And so I've been, I, yeah. I'm scrapping everything. Creativity all my big sky presets. Born out of necessity sometimes. Absolutely. Lack of resources is yeah. the mother of ingenuity. Yes, it is. That's also crazy. So, so. Richard, <laughs> probably. I think Richard, that was like Einstein Richard has given us some more. And <laughs> Let's not give credit too much like, credit. <laughs> I want to talk about this a little more because I think this is relevant to a lot of people out there. Richard's given us some more info. He was the one who asked about the mm. three acoustics. They have a keyboard player and a bass player, or piano player and a bass player. And no, three acoustic guitars. No drummer and three acoustics. And probably like five female vocalists. I'm just going to go out there and guess. Yeah. Like, I, I yeah. know, I think I know them. Mm. Now, yeah. let me ask you this, Richard. Does your piano player play every part? Like, bum, 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 yeah. bum, bum. Yeah. Like, uh, do they from do... the grave, he your Is that how your piano player plays? Um... That would be my next question. So you're going to have to approach that differently. You can. What I would do is tell your worship leader, if you brought an electric guitar in, they might be thinking like... Heavy metal, Right, they might be thinking... Or not only that, but like even like the playthrough videos we do at Worship Tutorials will not fit that environment. Style, yeah. Right? They're thinking like anthem rock, hill song, whatever they might have heard. Yeah. I assume maybe this is in a more traditional environment. So um, that actually that video that we did, Bradford mentioned of uh, "It Is Well," the Bethel version where Brad and I did it together. If you can, perfect, say, yeah, show it. just show them that video and say, "This is the kind of thing we'd like to do." Yes, you're gonna need to play cleaner, yes. a little more ambient, maybe. Yes. But it's just it really what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring another tone yeah. that's gonna yeah. fill out the sound a little better. And and you can make it fit with that sort of setup, but it's but you you're not gonna approach it like he said three female vocalists. Yeah, you were close. I was right on, man. (laughs) Showing people is way easier than telling them. I've seen a few things, Richard. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) showing is always easier than telling. Um, Uh, Some chords, no pads. So tell them your your you can uh, well you can have an electric player like if you have a helix. Or something like that, you can, boy, you can create some really nice yeah. ambience. Just stay that. away from the distortion. Yeah. That'll scare everyone. Right. Especially. No the, gain. Yeah. No, no distortion. If you don't have a drummer, yeah. you, you probably don't need like a ton of gain. Well, yeah. I'll prove that wrong, but I'll let you off. That's okay. Yeah. Well, Brad, but you're the master. So. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't use it very often. Or if you want to be, okay, backdoor sneaky. Mm-hmm. Okay, can we go backdoor sneaky? Sneaky sneaks. You, you put me in that environment. I'm going to bring my acoustic, mm-hmm. and I'm going to run it through my Helix, and I'm oh, going to yeah. basically you, do the same thing I would if I had stuff. an electric. Oh, I don't, and, I don't like effects and on acoustic. I would, yeah, but to, to, to get a different sound, and then be like, that's really cool. And then I would eventually maybe transition into like a hollow body, 
that looks kind of like an acoustic. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, you're bringing a and then before you it. know it, you're shredding like a reverse headstock Ibanez. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Charvel put out a Charvel put out a new line of like super strat like '80s hairband guitars. They look like Sirs. I want one. I want one. Like the pastels. There's a pink one yeah. and an orange one. I would rock the pink Gosh. one. With I the gotta roasted, get out of here with the roasted the orange, maple. The orange one is the one I would want. Man, let's you can't or, have. Let's both order one today. You just can't have too many guitars. Let's Why don't we order one Charvel right now and see if they want a review done? Yes. <laughs> uh, is this Charvel owned by Fender? Yeah, or well, something like I don't that. No, they use the Fender headstock, yeah. so they license it. That's what I think. So Char- I, I think Fender owns Charvel. We have a contact. Yeah, but we need to republish our <laughs> Fender review that we haven't published yet first. <laughs> um. All right, I gotta get out of here. Uh, it's twelve oh three. All right, more, we're gonna end it. <laughs> one more quick thing. How would you guys begin to usher in a good mixture of traditional and contemporary music in a majority older church? I think the problem is, is if that's the way the church is and you're trying to change it, it doesn't necessarily need to change. Yeah. Don't feel that you need to change something if the church is, if that's their culture, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, sure. It like works it, for some people. It, it works. Like, yeah. that's how, those are the churches yeah. I grew up in. Yeah. And, like, that's what it is. You don't, don't feel the pressure like you have to do the latest Bethel song just because to be a lot of other right. people are. Yeah. If, if your church is engaging and they love it mm-hmm. and people are coming to know Jesus, then that's great. But if nobody is coming to your church and nobody's getting to know Jesus, then maybe a discussion could be had of, we keep doing the same thing and it's not working. So there's there's yeah. two schools of thought there, I think. Yeah. And you can squeeze in contemporary songs, but whatever you do, don't change the style. Like, you can do Oceans on a piano, right? Or you an can, electric drum set. Yeah. yeah. But don't, whatever you do, don't bust out Alive by Hillsong Young and Three in between the, like, with the two like, hymns. With a multi Because that might be your last day at that church. <laughs> so, anyways. All right. Uh, well, thank you guys yeah. for hanging out with us. Yep. What are you playing? <laughs> that sounded familiar. That guitar is so good, man. I never play that lot on Sundays. I need to. Is Book Out still here? Maybe I'll bring this on Sunday, Dave. Who I think knows? Book Out had a jazz. Half the time I bring a different guitar to Sunday than I bring at rehearsal, which isn't very cool. Yeah, that's terrible. Because they set up... Keeping Book Out on his toes. I know. I'm just, I would not do that if I Just see how good he is at EQ. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because he has nothing else to do. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm playing the same guitar on Sunday that I played at rehearsal. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Remember, people imitate the what things you that celebrate. you celebrate. So find creative ways to celebrate what is happening That's right. in your church, what God is doing in your church. Mm. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Heard it from friend I think it's still live. It's live. He had to hit end It's yet. not ending. I hit end, and then I said end. We are so professional. It's not ending. Well, if you're still with us... I'm going to get Look, up and unplug the camera. This is the new the new YouTube live uh, dashboard, and it is That's not, not working. Oh, it looks it's cool. It's actually pretty nice, but it's not working. So you know what we're going to do? We're just going to stop the streaming.